I want to take a minute to welcome you to the 2025 LLM Hackathon for Applications and Materials in Chemistry, and welcome you to a thoughtful community of innovators and builders. We're gathered here for a shared purpose, and that is to show the world what is possible and what we are capable of, and really to influence the future of materials and chemistry discovery. No matter where you're participating from, whether that's North Carolina, Berlin, Tennessee, London, Toronto, Sydney, Boston, or other locations in between, we know that you are going to imagine and build amazing things. What well, we hope you'll get from this experience, we hope you'll get hands-on team experience, building an interesting product together, something that you can sh demo and showcase throughout your career, some visibility and opportunity to test your ideas with others, being part of this community, as I mentioned, of thoughtful innovators and builders, and maybe a paper. I want to take a minute to thank our 2025 sponsors, including Lila, Hugging Face, AI Kami, Cerberus, FUM, the National Science Foundation, Abstracts, and Biostate AI. If you're looking for the outputs of previous hackathons, you can find them here on the right, and these links will be posted in the Slack as well. Why does this matter? I think that we all can agree that we, we really have to massively accelerate our ability to discover and deploy new materials, optimize chemical processes, find new drugs, and more. And really all these solutions are important to solve our technological health and social challenges. Right now, it can take decades to move from discovery to application. We think that's unacceptable. Drug discovery costs, as we know, are through the roof. And we think there are huge opportunities to influence the way that people are learning and collaborating together. For this event, we encourage you to adopt a hackathon mindset where, for example, speed is greater than polish, learning is greater than perfection, and collaboration is greater than silos. For teaming and flow, all teams are going to be formed organically. You can do this before the event, and I know that a lot of people have been doing this through Slack, through Miro, and other in-person meetings, etc. All the topics that you're going to research are also going to be chosen by your teams organically. That's some info on how to find a team, you can look in the Slack, post in the teaming channel, DM other interesting people, etc. For Miro, you can post your idea on the Miro board to attract other participants. This has been particularly useful for teams in the past. And of course, you can always contact people uh, online or through your own networks. So the next question, it might be how to collaborate. And, and it's, it's a little bit different that, that this is a hybrid event. So some people will be working in person and some people will be worse working uh, online and some people will be working in a hybrid format. So, you know, we've got great tools that, that are free. So you have Slack, you have Zoom, you have in-person sites that are, are, are shown earlier. And, and all of these can be, can be leveraged to their max. We've seen very, very successful hybrid teams. Things that might help with your team early is to adopt clear team roles, make sure that everybody understands what they're going to be contributing and what you need from them to be successful and also agree on a concept early, what you can build. So one of the questions that we often get is what can we build here? And in previous hackathons, we've seen lots of different examples. We've seen software that has been built, web or mobile applications, command line tools, agentic workflows. We've also seen people aggregate things like models and data, create fine-tuned language models, create retrieval tools, integration tools, and even creating new data sets last year, which was great. Tools and infrastructure can also be a topic that could include benchmark suites, evaluations, workflow helpers, and, and more. And we're not trying to limit you to these. These are just some ideas that, that you can use. And what you can also think of as a rule of thumb is if it meaningfully advances materials and chemistry work with language models or multimodal models, it's going to be considered in scope. So this slide shows a little bit about what teams worked on last year. Last year, teams created applications in all of these areas and more. You can find information on these and actually the open source code in the following links, uh, which are available on archive. But people created applications that were in property prediction, molecular and material design, automation and novel interfaces, communication and education, research data management, hypothesis generation and evaluation, extraction and reasoning. And we think there's many more applications out there. Uh, these are just the buckets that, that came up last year. And we really encourage you to think about what are some new application areas that you think that these models might make a difference across the entire spectrum of the, of the research ecosystem. So as far as resources, we have uh, a channel that's going to be dedicated to keeping track of all the different resources that teams find that, that you, can, you can leverage. These include resources from our partners, including Hugging Face, Cerberus, and more. 
I also wanted to point out that Google Free Student Tier is available in, in most of the world, so please take advantage of that. I also wanted to address a few questions here. So external and personal resources are allowed. So if you have you know paid accounts for some of these, you can feel free to use those. If you have access to these through your university, feel free to use them. I've also made a set of data resources available uh, that we've collected that we, we think might be quite applicable across the board. You can use any data resource that you find or generate, not limited at all to this collection, but this is meant to get you started. You can find that at the link below. Questions about what we're looking for in submissions. I, I wanna highlight that our mission here is really exploration, right? We want teams to build prototypes that will seed deeper exploration by research groups, by companies, provide new capabilities, or even create new companies eventually. We realize that, that this is a hackathon, that there's a very limited amount of time, and you, know, you, have, you have a short amount of time to build prototypes. Not everything has to be perfect. The judges are going to know that. We're going to know that. And so, you know, really think about this as building a prototype, proving out concepts. The things that, that, that the judges are going to be looking for in particular are things like potential for impact across uh, materials and chemistry. For example, does it have the ability to accelerate aspects of materials science and chemistry research, learning, or applications? The innovativeness, you know, how unique is the approach? Is it going to stand out from other applications? Does it stand out from last year? etc. Relevance to material science and chemistry, making sure that it is in fact relevant to material science and chemistry, which is important here. But we do take a, a pretty broad view of that. People have worked on things like drug discovery and things that are kind of on the fringe of material science and chemistry. So we're not specifically tied to a very narrow domain or, or definition of material science and chemistry. So use your imagination. Again, our mission is exploration. So let's, let's keep going with that. And then, of course, we also want to look for novelty. So what new approaches has your team developed during this hackathon, right? That's something that we're going to be looking for as well. A few notes on the submissions. The submission process is going to be essentially each team is going to create a concise video presentation, which is two minutes or less, that summarizes your team's project and highlights its applications. Also, make sure you highlight the innovative use of language models, multimodal models, etc. And then we're going to post that video to an open social media platform of your choice. So you can pick, for example, YouTube, LinkedIn, Threads, Blue Sky, etc. And really what we need here is we need for your video to be publicly accessible by the judges. So what, we, what we're trying to aim for here is really sharing with the public early uh, all, of the, all of the findings that you and your teams will find. At the end of this, one team member should fill out the required Google form, which the link will be in Slack and it will be also included in, in the next slide. But be sure that your submissions are received by September 12th at 5 p.m. Central US time. All right, so let's go. Uh, teams can begin work on September 11th, 2025 at their preferred local time. So since we have people that are participating across the world, we have people in Sydney, we have lots of people in Europe participating, you can begin at your preferred local time. Just make sure that you submit projects by September 12th, 2025 at 5 p.m. Central Time. And the submission form is shown here. So this will also be in Slack. You don't have to screen cap this. After the event, we'll post the results as soon as possible and potentially have an invited showcase of the top entries. I, I do ask that you bear with us a little bit. The hackathon is approximately five times larger, perhaps, than last year. So we're we're uh, really looking at a scale here that's a little bit different. So the, the judging may take a little bit longer. So please, please bear with us. And with that, thank you and welcome and let's go. I do wanna point out that we will have mentors available on Slack and within a Zoom that we'll post to the best of our ability. It's going to be hard to have somebody available at all times during the day, but we are going to try to make mentors available as much as possible. So keep, keep growing your team. I keep thinking about your concepts and let's start hacking and seeing where things go. Uh, if you need inspiration, check out the hackathon outputs from last year. There are 32 examples that were published and also with open code repositories. So you can see what's built and you can see where there might still be gaps. And again, thank you for joining and I'm really excited to see what you'll build.